Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get Dad for Father's Day? Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row1 and save 15% off your order when you check out Row 1 Brand's Vintage Sports Pictorium Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. If he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 Vintage NFL Helmet Poster. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row1. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of Yesterday Sports on the Sports History Network. Today, in our final segment of Frustrating Errors, For great NFL teams, we're going to count down my top three picks of great teams that just couldn't seem to get over the hump and win the elusive Vince Lombardi Trophy. At number three, we have the Minnesota Vikings from 1968 to 1978. Few fans have suffered as much as Vikings fans. This is a team that had six future Hall of Famers play on it. On defense, they had Alan Page, Carl Eller, and Paul Krause. And on offense, they had Fran Tarkington, Ron Yarry, and Mick Tingleoff. Yet during this 11-year span, the Vikings reached the postseason 10 times and lost every time. In 1968, they lost their playoff game to the Baltimore Colts but they bounced back the following year with perhaps their best team ever. They finished the regular season with a 12-2 record, and they outscored their opponents 379-133 to and scored over 50 points three times. After defeating the Los Angeles Rams in the playoff game and the Browns in the NFL title game, they rode into the Super Bowl with an impressive 14-2 and record. They were heavy favorites to defeat the AFL champion Kansas City Chiefs, but they lost 23-7. They went 12-2 and again the following season, but lost to the underdog San Francisco 49ers in the playoff game. The following season, they lost to the Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs. After an off year in 1972, they were back in the Super Bowl in 1973 with an impressive 14-2 record, but lost to the Miami Dolphins 24-7. In 1974, they were back in the Super Bowl again, but lost again, this time to the Pittsburgh Steelers 16-6. In 1975, they had another outstanding season. Some thought they might go undefeated after a 10-0 start, but they lost three of their next five games, including a stunning 17-14 loss to the Dallas Cowboys in the playoff game. In 1976, they again made it to the Super Bowl with a 13-2-1 record but lost yet again, a 32-14 drubbing by the Oakland Raiders. In 1977, they made it to the NFC title game, but lost to the Cowboys 23-6. In 1978, they lost to the Rams in the playoff game, completing 11 years of frustration. At number two, we have the Los Angeles Rams, from 1973 to 1980, eight years in a row of making it to the postseason, only to lose every time. To make it worse, it was to the same two teams seven out of the eight times, losing to the Vikings three times and to the Cowboys four times. In 1973, after posting a 12-2 and regular season record, They lost to the Cowboys in the playoffs. In 1974, they lost to the Vikings in the NFC title game. 
and in 1975, they once again made it to the NFC title game, boasting a 13-2 record. They were heavily favored to win, but instead were humiliated by the underdog Cowboys, 37-7. In 1976, they were again defeated by the Vikings for their third NFC title loss in a row. In 1977, they lost to the Vikings in the playoffs. And in 1978, they were once again playing in the NFC title game, their fourth trip in five years. But once again, they were humiliated by the Cowboys, 28-0. The following year, they finally made it to the Super Bowl, but lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers 31-19. In 1980, they were once again defeated by the Cowboys in the Wild Card Playoff game. The Rams did win the NFL title in 1945 as the Cleveland Rams. They won it again in 1951 as the Los Angeles Rams. And after many years of frustration, the Rams finally won the Vince Lombardi Trophy in 1999, but as the St. Louis Rams. We now go to the number one era of frustration. The Oakland Raiders from 1967 to 1975. This team had nine future Hall of Fame players. In spite of this, and in spite of having the best combined regular season record in the NFL during this nine-year period, their postseason record was just seven wins and eight losses. In 1967, they went 13-1 and in the regular season and then beat the Houston Oilers 40-7 to win the AFL title. But they were no match for the NFL champion Green Bay Packers in the Super Bowl, losing 33-14. In 1968, they went 12-2 and in the regular season and then beat up on the Kansas City Chiefs, 41-6 in the playoffs, only to lose to the Jets in the AFL title game. In 1969, they went 12 wins, one loss, and one tie, and then beat up on the Oilers in the playoffs, winning 56-7. But with the AFL title on the line, they lost again, this time to the Chiefs. 17-7. to In 1970, they once again reached the AFC title game and lost again, this time to the Baltimore Colts. In 1971, they failed to reach the playoffs with an 8-4-2 record. In 1972, they went 10-3-1 but lost to the Steelers in the playoffs. In 1973, They got revenge by beating the Steelers in the playoffs, but were no match for the Dolphins in the AFC title game, losing 27-10. In 1974, they went 12-2 and then beat the defending Super Bowl champion Miami Dolphins in the playoffs. With Miami out of the way, Raiders fans were sure they would finally get back to the Super Bowl. But in the AFC title game, they lost once again. Steelers 24, Raiders 13. In 1975, they made it back to the AFC title game again, and again lost to the Steelers. It was the third time losing to the Steelers in four years, and their second time losing the AFC title game three years in a row. Raider fans began to lose hope. But in 1976, the Raiders beat the Steelers in the AFC title game and finally won their first Super Bowl. They would go on to win two more Super Bowls. That's it, folks. Hope you enjoyed the frustrating errors of great NFL teams. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com.
At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One Gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique Unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row One catalog and for gallery prints and gift items, plus get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row One Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes. We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories, and Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io.